Hi everyone, welcome to Crisis and Business Continuity. I'm glad that we obviously coming close, wrapping up the modules, and then of course you've got your exams coming up as well. And uh, today you just want to look at risk management and why it matters. It's, it's going to be a very short introduction, so don't worry, if you're not introducing anything too serious. You just to remind yourself about the concept of risk management and how it can help to manage and, and mitigate uh, possible risks which organizations may face. And then, of course, um, I will also look at issues relating to risk matrix and risk assessments as well within organizations and, and how organizations can use those type of uh, tools to, to mitigate uh, possible uh, risks that they face. So. Um, that will be the, the things that I really want to cover today. So, as I've mentioned, so the, the aim of the um, session is really to look at what risk management is, how it's been conceptualized, and then, of course, I'm going to look at uh, the value and component of risk management. And uh, we know that businesses are operating in a very turbulent environment these days, and risk management is an integral part of ensuring the survival and business continuity of organizations. So by looking at the values and companies of risk management, we'll also be highlighting some of the uh, principles and frameworks and processes that are embedded in the risk management as well. And like I said, I've just tried to bring to your attention the issue of risk matters and, and risk assessments as well. So that's where I will wrap it up. The question that I asked at the beginning is why is risk management so important to uh, modern organizations? And, and of course, you can start to look at uh, different crisis events, different um, disruptions or possible uh, major catastrophic that organizations have faced which have impact on their business operations and their on their business continuity and the ability of organization to mitigate to to manage those risks is really important because that can have an impact on the bottom line of operations in terms of profit in terms of continued operations as well in terms of delivering values to shareholders and and the going concern of a business itself so the bridge management is really important in today's uh, uh, business environment it's so volatile that it's so complex um, ensuring that you have the appropriate tools in place to mitigate those uh, risks from, from, from happening and uh, that can really make a, a lot of difference to organization. And of course, as you're going to see in the course of this, um, in these uh, conversations that we're having within these lectures as well, is that risk management or, or risk, the concept of risk itself is not just about negative, there's also the positive aspect of risk that we're going to look at as well. So that being said, what is risk? So when you start to look at the concept of risk, uh, you, you will know that um, you're looking at both the positive and negative uh, probable events, right, that can impact on the objective of organization. So any sort of events that can have an impact on the objective of organizations could be considered as a risk to the particular organization. That could be a risk to the organization itself. And therefore, what we do in a practical uh, context what we we um, are trying to say is that we we manage risks by reducing the probabilities and impact of negative uh, risks or threats and then of course we try to increase the, the probability and impact of positive risks or opportunities to the organization so i'm going to explain this so you're trying to reduce any sort of risk that can have a negative impact on the organization so you try to reduce that but any anyone that will have a positive impact on the organization you try to increase that so risk management is about that and a number of people um, over time think about reduce risk management to managing one aspect that i've just described now which is about the negative uh, risk or threats to the organizations, but risk management is much more broader, is much more uh, broader than that. So it's not just reduced to the negative aspect. 
So a risk is a combination. So a risk is a combination of threat and opportunity. So that's something to bear in mind. So it's not just about the threat, but also think about the opportunity aspects of, of the risk itself. And that will lead me to what is risk management? So we know it's an iterative process. Uh, mostly consists of five main steps or activities and that has to do with identification so risk identification is the very first step in the process and i have always argued that a risk that we've not identified we cannot manage it and then of course um, you start to look at risk analysis and then you do your risk evaluations based on the analysis you evaluate different options and then that will lead to treatment and then you start to look at monitorings and controls of the risk itself so this is what and and it's not just a a linear process is that's why we refer to it as it's rate you because it's a continuous process so risk management in, in, in essence is about looking at how you identify possible risks, how you analyze those risks and evaluate it, prioritize whatever options that you've arrived at based on your evaluations and then of course you treat it using uh, the possible tools and techniques that you have at your disposal. The essence is trying to minimize those ones that have negative impact and then of course you're trying to also maximize the one that can have a positive impact as well on the organizational objective so that that's basically that's what risk management is about and this will lead me to the components of risk management framework so most of the risk management framework what the things that you will find there you see the risk architectures um which would clearly define the roles we clearly define the responsibilities for example which shows communications and risk reporting structures within the organizations. And of course, you start to look at the risk strategy. So obviously with, um, with that, you want to specify your risk appetite, the risk attitudes and the philosophies that are defining those risk management um, policies of the organizations. And collectively, the risk management process sit at the center, uh, uh, as the center of that process, as you can see on the screen. And then of course you start to have your risk protocols where you're looking at the guideline for the organization. This has been widely documented both in the International Standard Organizations uh, Risk Management Framework and, and other, other um, studies as well have documented this. So I'm not going to do too much on, on, on this. Just to bring this to your attention in terms of some of those components of, of risk management framework. So you'll find your risk architectures the strategy aspect of the risk and the risk protocol or collectively have your risk management process coordinating everything um, at, at, at the center. So that will lead me to what have always been classified as the risk management when you're looking at the principle for example uh, you're looking at the the principles is on the left uh, of, of my screen and then, of course, you start to looking at the uh, the framework itself. I've described the risk management process. So, and then the processes that is um, entails in, in the entire process of, of, of this. So, when you're looking at the principle, have risk management is about value creation, creating values, and it's integral um, to every aspect of organization. It's not something that, that can be done in isolation. It needs to be embedded in the organizations and needs to be part of decision making process of the board now the higher le level highest level of the organization this needs to be embedded and it needs to be very systematic very thorough and timely like i said it's an iterative process and that's why you see within the framework you find the um at the top of the screen so you design of the framework for managing risks and then you go on to your implementations and monitorings and, and then of course you do your continued improvements of of that process as well given what i've described um, earlier looking at risk identification risk analysis risk um, evaluations and, and then of course you go back to treatment and you start to look at control monitoring and control of risks as well 
so this is this is about the the things that you usually find with um risk management uh is is it is iterative process um there's not a one-off exercise it's something that you continue uh to to do and the processes that i've described there you try to provide a very clear context um your risk identification security uh, using appropriate tools and techniques uh, for example we we discussed earlier in in this model we we look at different things like um your risk assessment uh, tools like the boat tower for, for for example this can be very useful for identification of, of possible um, areas where the organization may be vulnerable and then of course you start to go to your analysis and then of course you do your evaluations and uh, and then review and control of the risk itself so these are really really important to every organization in, in a sense but it's something I would encourage you to 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 have a look and go back and 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 pick pick what what you can pick from from this and help businesses organizations to to go through this this process as I have described uh, on this on this part of this the screen for for example it captures really captures that so a much more detailed um, uh, structure. Of risk management standard, the ISO 3100 um, is being widely adopted by so many organizations. And I thought I should just bring it to your attention. It's really document those um, structures, those um, processes that are involved in the risk management process itself. So it's something that I will encourage you to to have a look at the standard itself and see how you can use that. You can essentially use the ISO 33. 100 to help businesses, even micro and medium or large organizations, adapt it to their own context and see how you can uh, embed some of those uh, processes that I've described earlier uh, into the structure of the organization. Essentially, so the risk management process within the ISO uh, 3100, 31,000 um, really captured. On, on the screen where you're looking at establish the context right so at this stage you want to be very clear have an overarching risk strategy risk appetite your architectural aspect of the risk management right so you then obviously do your risk identifications and risk analysis evaluations and treatments i describe this as part of the definition as part of the, the different stages that are involved or, or step that involved in the risk management and this is where I discuss issues relating to the fact that you're looking at monitoring and, and the review is a continuous process communications and consultation is also ongoing so this process is not a one-off exercise is a continuous is a continuous process hence the hours you see are uh, linking this these aspects together in a practical context we want to Essentially, look at ways in which we can embed this aspect, this different aspect into organizations. Are the risk um, um, treatment options we want to look at? What are the strategies that are available to the organization to execute, to mitigate or um, possible ne uh, uh, negative risks, or for example, or those ones that may, may be perceived as an opportunity to the organization? So you deploy those tools as well. To mitigate to to manage that particular which, which the organization may be facing and this will lead me to uh risk matrix very simple look at the definitions of risks i presented earlier is that definition most definitions of risks present risks in terms of likelihood and consequence so risks equal likelihood and consequence or the probability uh times uh, maybe the severity or the impact of, of of an event happening so you could use the risk matrix based on your evaluation of a particular risk in this case so you could be looking at the likelihood so how likely is an event um, going to happen very likely likely or unlikely or highly unlikely right so based on that and then if you think okay it's very likely to happen 
and the consequence is going to be high that will be red. The consequences in terms of vitality, major injury, minor injury, negligible uh, injuries. If it's very, if it's going to be very, very serious, that will be high. And then, of course, you you do the same thing, looking at the likely um, event that can happen. And of course, is highly unlikely. But if it happens, it will be very vector that, that will be medium. So you use that to construct your risk matrix in terms of likelihood and uh, consequences. And on that, of course, sometimes you assign numbers to the distance, maybe on a scale of one to five, you assign the numbers and you use that to construct your risk matrix. And this is what I'm talking about in terms of uh, using number to construct your risk matrix. So you're looking at impact from one to five, very negligible, minor, moderate to very severe. And then of course, the probability in terms of maybe you're looking at from one to 20%. And then of course, at this stage, it's very negligible in terms of the probability of it happening. If it is one, you think the impact will be very negligible, that will be green. If it is two, uh, based on impact, but based on probability of it happening, one to 20%, that will be minor. Three, the same. And then, of course, you use the same process to construct the, the risk matrix. At the glance, it can help you to know areas where um, the, the type of risk that the organization is facing and how to uh, quickly deploy the appropriate uh, uh, resources to mitigate uh, those those particular risks. And then, and then, of course, one thing I, I just did on this particular slide is just to show you, uh, say, for example, you're doing financial risks. Uh, assessment in terms of templates and what you can do is to have your number you can use number to code it based on from lowest to very uh, low to low and then uh, medium high and the rest so you can code different type of uh, categories where the organizations or the business may be vulnerable and where the, you think the business is exposed and then, of course, you can use that to um, know what type of strategies, what type of resources that you need to put in place to mitigate uh, this this uh, uh, incident from, from, from happening. So this is just an example of what type of resources. In this case, we're looking at financial risk assessment. Remember, say, we just try to sum sum it up in terms of when you're looking at risk, uh, my definitions and, and, and then of course this has been um, widely cited in the literature that risk equal um, likelihood times impact. When you're looking at likelihood multiplied by impact, so that's the simple definition of what risk is. Um, in terms of likelihood, you're looking at uh, likelihood based on number from 1, 4, 6, 10 and then the probability election and sense of how probable it is, which is unlikely to happen, is possible to happen, it will definitely happen, and then you use that to construct your your matrix. So one being the likelihood is very low, so the risk is uh, and the impact is also low. So that means you can call it as low. And if you think maybe. Yeah, it has a chance of 5% and then of course it's likely to happen. Then it's medium, but again, you're looking at a, a stream. If the impact is going to be very high and then of course it's definitely going to be happen. So that would be a stream in this particular case. So if you use the uh, coding um, low, medium, high and a stream in this particular case so you can 
um, call yours based on based on this and assign this to to the different type of risk that organization is facing. When I was doing this, I I thought a much more relevant uh, something that I can draw your attention to is the health and safety executive. Uh, I find this uh, uh, template really uh, interesting to kind of sum up what what I'm trying to explain. Earlier, so use uh, COVID-19 as as hazard in this particular case as a risk assessment template, and then look at what are the hazards. So the hazard is the spread of COVID-19, for example, and you can do who might be harmed and how. So based on on remember this will depend on the nature of the organization you are assessing, and then you're looking at what are you um, already doing to control that particular risk? So you you put in those those things, and then you start to look at what further actions you need to take to control the risks and then you start to look at who needs to carry out those actions and then when is this action needed um, by so put a deadline to it and then you start to look at whether it is done whether it is ongoing and then of course assign responsibility and communicate across the team so this is a useful way to 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 do a, a proper risk assessment in practice Again, the template um, is here, reproduced here. So this can give you an idea in terms of what you, you need to do. Looking at potential hazard, looking at who uh, is at risk or was at risk, and then looking at existing control measures and the risk rating. So you can raise it from maybe a scale of high, medium, um, low, for example, or a scale of one to five. And then, of course, you can look at some of your pre uh, preventative uh, measures that you put in place and who is responsible in terms of risk ownership. So this is really important to take into account. And finally, um, so strategic risk assessment, uh, I think as you mentioned this, uh, is that you're looking at the overall strategies, like the overall strategies of the organizations. This is uh, understand the strategies of the organizations. You're gathering the Data and views on strategic risks, but for example, so this is one type of risk. Remember, we talked about financial uh, risk assessment earlier on. So, we're looking at strategic risk, for example, when you're gathering um, data and views on strategic risks, and these are risks that can have the consequential uh, impact on the uh, business direction itself. And then you start to prepare your uh, preliminary strat um, strategic risk profiles, and you can try to Almost similar to how you conduct a, a risk management process, um, you can develop your enterprise risk management action plans and communicate those to the risk owners within the organizations and try to make sure you embedded your enterprise risk management actions across the organizations and communicate that to, to everyone. Because there's no point in carrying out a risk uh, assessment without communicating the result to um, people with stakeholders within um and the organizations or even outside the organizations as well so that you can everyone can can buy in you can be on the same page so this is really important um so i just saw as you bring to you and and of course this um diagram kind of sum up you know that risk assessment process that i'm trying to i've been trying to get across really really well see so you so you're looking at your risk identifications and analysis and evaluations and risk treatment and like you said it's not a one-off process because communication and consultations and risk monitoring and evaluations and control you see also going communicating to different stakeholders so this process is is a continuous uh, process so it's not a one-off thing so that's something you should uh, bear in mind so i I'm just want to conclude um, by uh, saying I want to conclude by saying that uh, risk management is now seen as a sign of good management in organizations. So that that is something for sure. And uh, one of the things that I want want to take away from from the conversation so far is that uh, risk refers to all events, whether you're looking at occurrence or actions that can prevent you 
for your organization from realizing the ambitions of or plans and goals. Uh, two main attributes that I want to take away is you can be looking at likelihood or probability. So sometimes some literature refers to the frequency of occurrence. The other being impact or severities or consequences. And um, of course, we know that Rickson had that two-dimensional to, to eat negative and positive aspects of, of, of it. So that's really important. And uh, finally, I think I just want to mention that risk management is about strategy, it's about method, it's about supporting things that you deploy to identify and control risk to an acceptable level. And that is um, usually the risk appetite of the organization. That is the risk which the organization is willing to accept without having a consequential effect on a business continuity. And of course, these will be some sort of topics that obviously we will maybe exploring at a much more master's um, levels class. But at this stage, you just hope that uh, you've been able to pick out one or two things from the conversation so far. And uh, of course, I want to wish you the very best of luck as we you know, conclude this um, particular module. So I hope that uh, you pick out the lectures and, and, and try to use it to adapt and, and um, help businesses and maybe small or large organizations to manage their risk management process. And I hope uh, that uh, you will be able to apply some of the things that we've taught in this module so far. So thank you all um, for your feedback, comments and engagement so far. I wish you the very best of luck. Uh, thank you so much. I will see you all again.